Here, today we're talking about the principled BSDF, the principled shader. And we uh, specifically the tagline being, the, the, the context being, is it an elite replacement or is it just another option? And uh, just another option is not, I don't mean that to sound negative or anything, but um, there, I, I feel like I've detected a bit of a misconception in the Blender community. Um, okay, I'm seeing some ones now. Man, the delay might be like 15 or 20 seconds, it feels like. Pretty significant. Um, cool, seeing some ones. I'm glad you like it. Uh, but yeah, the misconception I feel like that's out in the Blender community is, is that once the principled shader hit the scene, you don't, you really don't have any need for the other shader options and you can just use that one. Um, but that's not been my experience and I wanna kinda talk about that misconception, tease it out a little bit. Today we're gonna, I think we're gonna have fun. I came up with this kinda silly game to, to go through examples of when it's, when it's working and when it's maybe not so useful. Uh, the principled shader, I mean. Um, what was the question? Let's see, I don't, oh, the question, sorry, Miranda. I was, if, if you liked the new stream layout, you know, uh, my window up in the top right, no more borders, no b more blue borders, just a little bit more refined, I suppose. Um, if, and I said, press one if you like it. Um, all right, so with that said, let's, uh, let's go in, let's get started talking about the principle of BSDF. Feel free to ask questions like usual. I'm gonna keep an eye on the chat. We've been having a good conversation so far like usual, spanning various different topics. So it's good to um, always catch back up with you guys. Um, with that said, let's let's get into some context about the principled shader because it is a very, very welcomed addition to the Blender tool set because for five and a half years, Cycles hit the scene in 2011 and I just double check that. So this handy little page uh, in the Blender um, reference manual, if we, we can, search for, uh, it's the history, like big key, uh, big milestones. And if we look up cycles all the way at the top, go to the first one, there we go. Uh, December 11th cycles was added to trunk. So that was, uh, that was a long time ago. I remember when that happened, it was super hype at that time. The fact that this brand new, highly realistic um, uh, renderer that could work in the viewport was coming out. So. From that point to principled BSDF, where is that? If I can type. Okay, in September 2017, the principled shader uh, was added to trunk. And that's a little like, uh, I think it's a little over five and a half years that we did not have the principled BSDF. And during that time, we could only build our shaders like Legos with one node at a time, component by component. And while that, it was and still is extremely flexible. Um, the the most liberating way to create your materials. Um, it also c got really annoying whenever you kept creating the same metallic materials or the same dielectric materials, um, especially over and over. And you always had to add the Fresnel component if you wanted it to be realistic, and um, and add like you know between five and ten nodes just to create a simple you know paint material or um, or metallic kind of material. So it was um, very welcome to have all of that consolidated. And it, within those five and a half years, you know, Uber shaders started appearing on the scene with, uh, apparently on the scene is my um, phrase of the day. But uh, yeah, the Uber shaders started being created and let loose. And those were great because they took all of the, the common components, reflectivity, glossiness, which are the same thing, um, diffuse, anisotropic, uh, glass, all of that stuff, it, it combined it into an Uber shader into one singular place, which was great, but there was a bunch of them. Some you know, were sold on the marketplace, on the Blender market, some were given away for free, and but they weren't adhering to a standard necessarily. So they, they weren't reliable between each other or um, they weren't necessarily photorealistic or not realistic, but like dependent on a realistic standard like PBR. They were uh, they were just consolidated based on the the creator's you know like preference or or s specific approach, but they kind of prophesied a savior so to speak that would come in the form of the principal shader, which did eventuate as the chosen one, the official um, Uber shader so to speak of the uh, of our of our uh, Blender application of our shader uh, network and the principal shader is really really nice because not only is it a consolidated single node that we have to work with um, for all of our common material components, but it also adheres to the PBR standard, 
um, that that represents underlying uh, realism conventions that are happening without your your um, your input, right? So Fresnel is happening by automatically, and you know the the roughness is is connected to the I believe the roughness value of like the um, reflection is connected to the uh, transmission stuff like that. Um, in, in ways that are realistic that you don't have to set up manually. So it's really nice. Um, and this, this standard that it adheres to is from Disney. They developed the original principled shader. And I, I believe for Wreck-It Ralph, which I totally got from Andrew Price, which I'll mention in the uh, next slide. But um, yeah, so from that film, they created this shader that was standardized with this PBR method so that lighting could be reliable in every shot. You know, uh, before that, you could, you could do a, an interior scene, light it one way and all the materials set it up one way and then take those same materials outside to much more powerful light of the sun, for example, and then the shader looked bad all of a sudden. So by standardizing it into a scientific uh, format you know, called PBR, it could be much more reliable. So anyway, that's, that's where the principled shader comes from. The one in Blender is based on Disney's principled shader. That's where we get the name um, and like the, the underlying workings and stuff. So. That's where it comes from. Very, very welcome tool. If you want to see more about kind of background of the principled shader, uh, I highly recommend you watch Andrew's video here, how to use Blender's new ultimate uh, shader, the principled BSDF. He goes into good detail about some of those, those underlying uh, conventions that are happening um, and why they are scientifically reliable and in the PBR standard and stuff like that. So I recommend you watch this video. Um, there is, however, one one part that I disagreed with, which is segues into this whole whole stream. And um, let me find that particular part. Oh, wait a minute. I can't see the unmute button. What do I do about that? I must not have tested this well. Let me, um, <laughs> let me try this again. Where is it? I'll just play it from here and then go back to the... So first of all, I think you should be of no material in the real world. Is the shader to end all shaders? That's what he because said. Because it's So he says that the principal BSDF is the shader to end all shaders. And I do not agree with that. Um, I think I know where he's coming from. He, he is someone that, that definitely strives for realism. And with someone who's going for realism, realism the principal BSDF is going to be a valid replacement for most of the situations, uh, especially dielectric materials like paint, bricks, wood, um, plastics, you know, stuff like that. And then you have your metals. Those two, especially in simple glass materials, are going to be great for the principal BSDF. And uh, let me go back to presenter view. So yeah, um, that's the one part of the video that I, I disagreed with. And um, I think that a lot of people in the community maybe share that sentiment that the, Uber, that the principled shader is the shader to replace all shaders. And so uh, that's not been my experience, and I want to go through uh, very specific examples of where that's not been the case. Um, and hopefully we can all kind of leave with maybe a better understanding of exactly what the principled shader is and what it's useful for. Um, let me make sure I'm not, I don't have any questions yet. Principled shader, aka Jesus. Yeah, I kind of got ran away with that uh, savior uh, um, metaphor. Uh, looks so crispy. That's that's the word. I like crispy. I'm glad you. you I assume that's about the stream layout. Um, cool. All right. So let's go over some um, some reasons why the principled shader is amazing. Number one, it's easy to use all around or all purpose material node. Right. So that's that that single node, uh, all the, the various components being um, consolidated into one package. That makes it very easy. Uh, it's, and I think for beginners, like it's kind of a, a, ne a very necessary part um, where you can move around sliders instead of having to physically, physically, instead of having to manually add a new component, like where do reflections come from? Oh, you have to add the glossy component. Oh, like, wait, Fresnel, I have to add that separately. So the all-purpose singular material node very, very convenient, very nice to use. Um, I find it super useful for quick materials, especially like when I want, I, I need a material fast. If I have a scene with a lot of objects, you know, I want to create a bunch of materials quickly and manually setting those up with nodes, individual nodes can take a lot of time. Um, so it's great for that purpose. Also realism, I've been mentioning that under under the hood of 
the principled BSDF, there are scientific things happening like Fresnel that are done automatically and reliably according to the PBR standard, which um, lends itself to realism. So if realism is your thing, then you're going to use the principled BSDF maybe more than than uh, other people who, who aren't you know uh, pursuing realism. Um, and then finally, compatibility with broader PBR standard. This is great because other apps also um, adopted the PBR standard that has been popular for the last few years. And so now in, in um, I forgot the name, Substance Painter, for example, you can create all your PBR shaders, export them out for rendering in Blender, and theoretically you will get a one-to-one -one exact visual representation of that material from Substance into Blender, or from Blender creating game assets using a PBR principled shader, exporting that out for use in Unreal, for example. Like I also believe the principled BSDF from Blender is tightly related to, uh, to Unreal's, Unreal's uh, PBR, um, principled BSDF. Um, so anyway, that's awesome, the compatibility. Uh, before, before PBR was a standard, you know, being able to, to jump between apps was, was risky. You had to always do a lot of manual setup. So that's great. These are huge reasons why the principal BSDF, BSDF is here and why it gets a lot of use. Uh, some less than amazing parts of principal BSDF is that it is a limited uh, material creation process, right? Because it adheres to a standard, it does limit some customizability, customization. And, you know, for someone like me, who really likes to get in and create crazy materials. Like I love the potential that that offers. The principal BSDF does have a box around it that sometimes I need to break out of, or if you're really into materials, you'll need to break out of. Um, and so, you know, limited can be a good end, but also a bad thing. And many times I have just said, principal's not gonna work here. Let's remove it and start from scratch. Um, also non-photorealistic rendering, okay? Realism is not the only name of the game in computer graphics. Uh, a lot of people are doing NPR comic book style rendering or you know anime and 3D, that kind of thing. And then there's a whole spectrum in between that is a mixture of the two, you know, somewhere. And we're gonna talk about that spectrum in the next slide. Um, but yeah, if you are into non-photorealistic rendering, um, the, the principal shader is not gonna do that much for you necessarily. The closer you get to really NPR, like comic book rendering or stippled kind of cell shaded rendering, tune rendering, the less uh, PB, um, the less the principal is going to do for you. Um, and then finally, some common material components are simply not available within principal BSDF right now. I I would hope to see them added at some point because it it I don't understand why they're not there, um, to be honest. But hold on a second. Yeah. Uh, anyway, um, so those are three things where three situations where principled is is less useful. And speaking of that spectrum, I'm calling this the aesthetic, the spectrum of aesthetic priority. You have your realism and you have NPR. And maybe you can put yourself somewhere if you're if you're not fully realism or fully NPR like me, you're somewhere in the middle. And I put myself right about here uh, because this spot and for me, how I've always approached computer graphics is I lean towards photorealism, but I don't prioritize realism over artistic license or artistic preference. So this is what I call believable. And you've probably heard me say that many times if you watched my, my shading, any, anything to do with that, anything I do with shading, I always mention believable because believable to me is realistic enough that the average person will accept it, but it's also, there, it's room for me to tweak the Fresnel value however I want. I'm going to add Fresnel because that's necessary to get to realism, but I'm going to tweak it because of I just want to. I want it to be uh, my own. Um, I, I want something specific out of it. And so that, that lands me in believable where principled, the closer you are to realism, again, that's going to principled's most relevant. And so I do use it a lot. I would To put a number on it, I would say probably 75% of the situations I'm using principled, but then that other 25% I'm not. Um, but anyway, maybe put yourself on the spectrum and and I would say that toward realism, you're gonna lean on principle. That's gonna be more relevant to you. Believable and tangible. Thank you, Miranda. That is exactly what I like to say. <laughs> Glad it's sticking. Question, uh, yeah, 
Question, have you ever seen a behind the scenes material node tree from a movie, say the new Spider-Man, Spider-Verse uh, or Toy Story? You know, I've seen plenty of behind the scenes and I can't say that I've ever seen a shader graph or node specifically. Usually, even with like a Lord of the Rings, which is, you know, really probably set the new standard for like shining light on behind the scenes and including a lot of visual effects work. And really the only stuff I remember seeing was like viewport snapshots, you know, like a quick shot of someone, you know, a, a rigger like rotating the arm of a, of a go golem or something, of a, go of a golem, of a, uh, specific, you know, the troll is what I remember in my head. Um, like seeing that rig. So I've never really seen a shader node necessarily. Um, I feel like maybe I've seen one float around before on forums or something and they're like super complex. I mean, I don't imagine too many. Uh, I just, you know, like we had a whole texture shading department when I worked at Real Effects, and like when that's your one job, it, you know, you're not going to set it up simply. Like you're going to be really detailed to, to make sure that that shaders customize exactly what you want. That's what I saw more often. It would be sort of maybe equivalent of like phoning it in if you just use the principal BSDF, plugged in your textures, called it done. Because that's like an hour's worth of work max, you know. Um, but anyway, so I would guess that like especially for Into the Spider-Verse, like that's doing wildly unique things with the render quality, the, the shader quality. So there's no way that a principal BSDF would just work out of the box for that kind of thing. Um, there is no way that's true, but... Yeah, that I mean that's a great example of like what what you know photo, leading more toward the NPR in this spectrum example like I would put Spider Verse like really close to NPR like really really close actually um, and Miranda she mentioned somewhere on CG Cookie that she saw the movie or maybe it was on Twitter that you saw the movie and you liked it and I'm so glad you did um, because like that's the sort of movie the sort of animated movie that that's like a milestone in my own journey I'm gonna remember. You know, if I need some inspiration, go watch Spider-Verse because they challenge so much of, like, the convention of animation. Um, anyway, so I'm glad you saw that uh, after I've talked so much about it. All right, let's play a game. I want to have a little bit of fun with this. I mentioned earlier that, that uh, well, I'll just explain the game. I've got five examples, five shader examples, where I want to ask you, do you think Principled can accomplish this situation? And then you're going to say yes or no in the chat or with a number, you're going to say yes or no. And then if you get, whoever gets all five of them cor correct, then I'm going to give you 50 XP points um, to your account. Uh, so rather than just going through this, you know, one by one, uh, just, you know, ex ex explanatory like, uh, I, I think it'd be fun to make a game out of it. Um, so let's talk about some rules of this game. When I, when, if you want to answer yes, that principled can achieve this particular situation that we're going to go over. Uh, principled must be capable by itself without the assistance from other shader nodes or BSDF nodes. Now that's different from texture nodes where you're creating, you know, pot potentially procedural textures with a ton of, of texture nodes. That's fine. That That is separate from the shader BSDF nodes. And so for it to count as yes, principled can do this, it needs no other assistance from other BSDFs. Does that make sense? Um, excellent, we've got one exception or accept person accepting the challenge. I'm glad. Um, so yeah, the principled must be capable by itself. Number two, uh, must you must submit each answer during the 10 second countdown after each question. So what I'm gonna do is read the question, can principle do X? I'm gonna maybe clarify, you know, the example if, if, if I feel like it's needed. And then I'm gonna count to 10 and you have to press in the chat, press zero if you think no, uh, principled cannot accomplish this. Press one if you think it can. And that's kind of like, you know, scripting t uh, uh, true or false, like false being zero, true being one. And you have to do it in that 10 seconds. And you have to, if you want, if you want to get the points, you have to submit after each question because you can't be quiet during all the questions. And then at the end say, hey, I got them all right. So there needs to be some semblance of accountability. And uh, you are responsible for keeping track of your total right answers. There's only five. That should be pretty easy to do. And yeah, if you get all five correct, then you win. You must be honest. This is an honor system. So we're not, we're civilized here. We're not, you know, Neanderthals lying our way to the top. That's not what this is about. Um, and all right. Lag here is pretty bad. Yeah. Um, 
Okay, so that that tells me then. I wonder why it's so bad. I don't remember it being quite like 15 or 20 seconds, but uh, um, all right. Well, I'll be sure to wait. Long. I'll count to 10 and then wait, I guess, and be awkwardly waiting for another 20 seconds or so, so I can let the chat fill up. And um, yeah, I mean, also after I count to 10, that should be okay because I can continue on and the timing will be relative, whatever. All right, let's get into it. Number one. Oh yeah. In case you forgot, you get 50 XP if you win. Can principal do dispersion? Dispersion is the phenomenon where you take a refractive material, like a, like diamond, like glass, um, water, and l white light travels into that, that object, bounces around, and then is split into its rainbow spectrum, the Roy G. Biv, right? So if you are, I've used this example before, but if you're a Pink Floyd fan, and you've listened or are aware of the Dark Side of the Moon album, that is an example of dispersion. White light comes in to a refractive material, in this case a prism, and it separates it out into its rainbow spectrum. So that happens in refractive materials, and um, I saw a bunch of zeros come in. Uh, that happens in refractive materials. It's usually pretty subtle. It seems like you guys know what dispersion is, and... You can see the coloration here in the in the refraction. So I don't see a single one. You guys might be smarter than I anticipated. So I can't remember. Let's see. You are correct. I didn't count to 10. No, 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 no. I already broke my own rules. Ah, what do I do? I'm going to go ahead and count to 10. One, get your answers in. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Probably the fastest 10 seconds ever. But I only see zeros. I see one, one. one two. <laughs> the group think effect is going to be fun. Yeah, that's true. So one is, uh, I already, already told you, you, you are correct, zero. Um, that principled by itself, I have not been able to achieve a dispersion effect by itself. <sighs> yeah, sorry about that. I messed up. I'm gonna I'm gonna be sure to count and follow my own rules. But I mean, you guys already knew this one apparently. So let us dive into Blender and look at the dispersion and why I could not really achieve it. Dispersion. All right. I'm still not used to the Pi menus. In 2.8. All right, so the dispersion, I have a, a lesson on um, Shader Forge uh, about dispersion and creating this effect. And it's it, uh, in that lesson, it's created using gl just simple glass BSDF nodes um, because you have to combine them using red, green, and blue, if this is new to anybody, but um, I'm going to go ahead and go over it anyway. But use red, green, and blue because if I duplicate this and change the color to white, um, saturation down. So like red, green, and blue at a value of one creates white digitally. So when you separate it out into red, green, and blue for glass and just slightly tweak the index of refraction, 1.4, 1.45, and 1.45, 1.425, and 1.45, the refraction is just slightly different. And when you add them together, you get mostly white, but then a little bit of coloration. And that's how we can, we can uh, simulate that effect of, of dispersion. And so with the BSDF, the principal BSDF, you can't, you can't really get that control by itself. So right out of the gate, it's not a replacement by itself. And even when I try to add them together, um, I first tried mix, a mix node for some reason. But if we swap those out, Shift S, because I'm using Node Wrangler, swap them out for uh, add BSD, add shader, shader, add shader. Um, right away, there's something happening under under the hood of principal BS, BSDF that makes it very different from uh, the regular glass BSDF. And I'm not sure exactly what that is. Perhaps if we dial down the value, what what is that to? So if we go to value of like 0.3, let's say, somewhere in that ballpark. So yeah, we can get somewhat close. Still looks a little bit different. The index of refraction, oh, they're, they're different. 1.4, 1 1.425, and then 
And that's, I mean, they're not the same, but they're, you know, it's, it could be passable, I suppose. But even still, you know, like we have to do it with three duplicated principal BSDF nodes. Um, I should, I really am saying BSDF a lot. Um, but like, you can't do it by itself. I think we all know that. Uh, and if you're gonna duplicate it this many times, you know, you might as well make it a little more appealing to the, to the eye and make it just the glass BSDF. So that example, we're done with that one. Um, oh, I think you just gave me an answer to a problem I've been working on for a while. That, that's good. I'm glad. All right, how about the next one? And let's see if I can pull it off correctly. Next example, can principled do figured wood? Okay, I'll play this video about what exactly principled wood is, uh, figured wood is. So it's a, it's a phenomenon that happens in wood grain especially in high-end, like expensive furniture or in a guitar instruments, for example, um, where it's, it's basically a real life normal map where there's this clear rippling that reacts with light. It looks like it's three-dimensionally a wavy surface, kind of like an ocean or something like that. However, the actual surface is smooth and flat. And, and this phenomenon makes wood kind of interesting to look at, this type of wood interesting, interesting to look at. So again, being a real life normal map, can principle do that by itself? All right, um, I'll start counting. One, two, three, get your answers in. Four, zero for no, one for true. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Watch the answers come up. I think with anisotropy or something. Question, is the principle more resource demanding? Ah, you know, I'm, that, I knew I forgot something. I was going to, I meant to do tests. Like, well, that would have been, maybe in the dispersion example, I could have done that. Um, where, yeah, I want, I want to do a test, which one renders faster, if either. That is a very good question. I have wondered if the principle is slower, I wonder. Um, okay, we've got a little bit more of a variety in here. We've got a double zero. Definitely not. Um, and we got several ones. So the answer is yes. The ones are correct. It can do figured wood. And really the, the, the only reason it can is because of this normal and clear coat normal. So there's two normal channels in the principal BSDF. And that's really the only reason it can, it can do that. Um, Real quick, uh, what is anisotropic filtering? That is, uh, think of brushed metal, right? So if you have like a pot or pan that's brushed metal or a toaster, for example, stain, stainless steel appliances, something like that, um, the reflections are blurry, right? They're kind of like a bunch of scratches, really microscopic scratches all over the surface that uh, makes the reflections kind of stretch out into these bands. Very distinctive effect. You know it exactly when you see it. Um, but I guess I could just, I'm on the internet after all. Let's look up uh, um, brushed metal. Yeah, so this is an example of, of brushed metal. So these tiny microscopic scratches ends up stretching the reflection out over the surface and uh, you get effects like this. That's what anisotropy, anisotropic reflection is. Um, cool, so yeah, let's go over, it's really pretty simple, like the figured wood situation. So we'll, we'll go over that example real quick. Figured wood. And yeah, it's very, um, it makes it very easy having the clear coat separate from the, wait a minute. Oh, I was about to say, did I really not create that with the principled? Um, so yeah, all, we're, all we have going on in this, in this shader is we have a ver Veronoi texture. Um, which is, you know, I'm manipulating it slightly with the, with the mapping and vector curves. Um, but if we, that's really not that important. Um, but yeah, you have your vector, uh, your Vernoi texture, and then that's plugged into a bump map, which goes into the normal slot. So the normal affects your roughness value, your glossiness, your color. Um, it, it's like layer one. And then for the clear coat normal, I leave that empty. And so when you uh, engage, let me, uh, plug this back up. So when you turn off clear coat, this is just your typical bumpy surface using a normal map. But then you engage clear coat, 
make the roughness really low, representing like a polyurethane in this, in this wood example. And um, that clear coat is not affected at all by the normal map. So you get, you get this illusion of, of a figured wood kind of example. So um, I just, these, all these examples, keep in mind, they're kind of relative to where on the spectrum I, I land, which is kind of believable. So, you know, I've had to do figured wood. Um, I like woodworking and creating like furniture and stuff like that. So uh, it's just an example that I'm, I'm familiar with, but it still only requires one single BSDF node. Let's see. Oh, but there's a node. Yeah, so Miranda, um, these texture nodes, I, like these are all um, basically procedural texture nodes that are used to manipulate uh, the nodes within the shader, right? So if you go to shader, uh, the shader, well, if you go to add shader, shift A, and in your shader menu, these are all BSDF nodes, and they are separate from the textures. I, like you're never gonna have a master texture node uh, I don't think you're always going to have a bunch of them, but but specifically, I'm just looking for one single principle BSDF to pull off all of the shading required. Um, oh, I'm sorry if I didn't explain that clearly. So yeah, it, I, sorry I meant to explain that clearly, but it can be multiple texture nodes, just not multiple principled or any other uh, supplemental shader nodes. These green nodes uh, up at the top. All right, let's go on to the next one. Figured wood and a bubble. Can principle do a bubble? Uh, so we got another transparent type material, but the key thing that I'm interested in is this colored swirl pattern that is in the reflection. Like, uh, do you, can you achieve that with the principle by itself? Or do you need a couple other nodes in there, a couple other shader nodes in there to, to make this thing happen? This is probably pretty easy. But uh, I'll count down. Number one, number two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I apologize, Miranda, if the rules cost you the points. <laughs> uh, that, uh, it's an imperfect system, I guess I'm realizing. Doesn't change it that we lost. Oh, now you're gonna make me feel bad. Crap. Um, yeah, so let me see the ones or twos pop in. I don't know, maybe I'll do like f four and above. Maybe if you get four out of five, I'll give you like 40 points. How about that? Bunch of ones, bunch of ones. Okay, well, yeah, this one is a little bit simple. It, it can, it definitely can. Um, yeah, so this one's this is a simple one. Uh, let's let's create it. I've never created this material before um, on any other lesson, so I figured we'd just jump in there and kind of do that real quick. Let us open the example. Awesome, I don't think anyone got that one wrong. Oh man, this system sucks. <laughs> So yeah, I guess if you, I, Tebow, I think you're saying that you can submit a comment and then it, it, it delays for you or something. That's funny. That, or, well, it's funny from my perspective, that sucks. Um, I don't know, we'll have, to, we'll have to figure something out. I want there to be free, I want there to be free, uh, or free, I want there to be correct points given out. So I don't know, we'll have to figure that out. Um, so yeah, the the uh, bubble example, uh, Pavel, you said you've done a bubble, but not with the principle though. Um, really, like the the magic happens in the texture nodes. So be, um, we'll I'll just recreate this real quick. The magic. Um, it's not it's not too crazy, but uh, what I want to do, if you look at the, if we go back to look at the reference. Um, so the real standout feature that we need to create is. Uh, it being this swirly, colorful pattern. So it kind of starts pink in the middle, turns into like a yellowy green outside of that, and then like a, a white to cyan kind of teal color on the outer edges. So we need a, a pattern, a texture material. We need a texture that can do this sort of radial pattern. So Fresnel basically is going to work, that kind of factor. 
oh, it's an anti-spam measure, so you can't multiple post in a short period of time. I swear I've been able to post back to back fairly quickly. That's that's strange. Um, but uh, yeah, so we'll we'll start with the Fresnel pattern and tweak it. So Shift A input, and you can go straight to Fresnel, but I'm going to use a light uh, a layer weight. I like that one a little bit better. And then from there, we're going to plug that in. Let's just look at it by itself. Oh, one more thing for the bubble. Let's go to wireframe, turn on my overlays. So it looks like just a sphere, but there is a very, very small level of thickness via, if you can see that, you can see it right there. There's a little bit of thickness from the um, solidify modifier, very, very small thickness because a bubble, you know, has a, is paper thin, um, just a tiny bit of thickness. If you don't do that, then your, your principal BSDF will treat the sphere like a solid glass orb. Uh, question from Omar, can we at least, can we get a, at least a screenshot of those materials to try them for ourselves later? Those look fun, uh, those look like fun that I have never tried to create. Yeah, um, yeah, certainly. Uh, yeah, um, where should I do this? I'm trying to think. How about how about in the when I when I archive this this recording of the stream in on this page below the description, I'll I'll post screenshots of the materials of the shader notes so you can have those um, because yeah that makes sense. Maybe share the files out. Maybe that's the better way to do it. Um, cool. Yeah. All right. So layer weight, and we're gonna plug that into a converter color ramp and now if we do the I, I like to use facing and let's go back to render view whoops rendered all right so this is what the layer weight gives us out of the box which is great you know the black can can become the pink and then we can you know change the gradient the color gradient uh, as we go out so the black flag needs to be a nice pinkish color and then control cl uh, clicking I use left click select so control left click uh, in the in the spectrum it adds another flag and we can change that to be that kind of greenish yellow and then finally maybe add another blue one like a cyan in here and then it finally goes to white all right so that's kind of the spectrum that matches our little bubble here And all right, so that looks good. It's a it's a very consistent circular um, ramp going from center to outside. And to change that up, we're going to add. I'm going to click on the layer weight and hit Control T because I have Node Wrangler enabled. It's going to do that automatically, automatically, really. And we're going to use. Um, hmm, I don't need this image texture. wasn't expecting that. So uh, yeah, to, for the mapping, uh, for the texture coordinates, let's use normal instead of UVs. That should be, okay, that's what I was expecting. And then turn off my overlays. And so I'm gonna use a, a noise texture combined with the vector curves to give us a, a nice wavier type of pattern, one that matches more this clear waviness in the reference photo. So I'm gonna swap out, hit the mapping node, Shift S, again, a node wrangler feature, and what am I doing? Vector, vector curves. And then from here, we're going to add a texture, noise texture node, put that into the factor. All right, so nothing should happen quite yet. You probably, most of you have probably seen this, me do this before. But from here, we can start to adjust these flags, the, these, uh, what do you call them? Graphs, the, the um, curves. So I'm gonna adjust the X, let's move the Y down. You know, I, there's no, there's not much rhyme or reason to this. I'm just trying to get something to to affect the center. And then, what we can do is adjust. Can you really even see that quite yet? Maybe I need to make it a little more extreme. All right, so you can start to see the breakup pattern come into effect. Um, let's let's uh, increase the distortion a bit. Now we're getting somewhere. So this distortion up to like six, we get these nice swirls, which looks more like our reference image. And then, huh, what can I do? Yeah, I think that's turning out pretty good. 
Now that we, since we are adjusting the vector curve information, you know, uh, the pink is gonna kind of come in and out, which I'm not animating the shot. It's just, you know, a quick shader to put together. So I don't, this might work fine in an animation situation, but uh, it is, you know, tweaking that information is getting us a kind of an interesting dynamic effect, which I guess could be desirable or could not be, but I'm going for a, um, just a still frame. So it's not a big deal. And I'm gonna, now we can plug this into the base color of our principal BSDF. And if I crank up metallic all the way, you can see that the reflection is now being incorporated with those colors, with that color pattern. Um, we we might, uh, we don't need metallic. Well, actually we might use metallic. This is what it looks like. Actually, I know what I'm doing. So let me, I, I'm not starting from scratch with the principle. This is a, a pre-existing. Let me remove that and we'll start from scratch with the shader principle BSDF. All right, so this now, we go, it goes into the base color. And from the base color, if we turn on, um, let's see, specular all the way, let's turn the roughness down to like 0 0.01, really, really clear. Um, so that looks good, but the it's not clear, and we need the transmission value, which is refraction. Um, let's crank that all the way up to one, and now we're getting our colors being refractive. Um, definitely way too strong in, in terms of saturation, so we'll add a Rather than change each flag individually, let's add a color hue saturation. From here, we can change the global saturation down to like 0.2, maybe 0 0.4, 0 0.3. I don't know, it's pretty prominent here. In fact, I yeah, I think the specular by itself is not quite enough. Like there's a lot of reflection, but you know, it looks, looks better depending on the angle, but to, if I'm trying to match this, the reflection looks much higher. And also the color seems to be influencing like the color of the reflection a little bit. So I want to start increasing the metallic value a little bit. Like, you know, a bubble kind of has that sort of oily effect where yeah, if you ever see oil on the ground, you know, it, it has like the rainbow reflection. Like there's definitely an element to this bubble that has that as well. I feel like a little bit more, I feel, I feel like that's where the metallic kind of comes in. Um, perhaps increasing also the world strength. Make it a little bit brighter. Anyway, yeah, so I mean, this kind of looks like a bubble. <laughs> it's not perfect, but um, I think this, this principal BSDF could more than be useful for uh, for this type of shader. So anyway, that's a new shader for you guys. Hopefully that was uh, informative. Let's see, I think this is kind of a question statement um, from Concrescence. I find myself trying to make things and then end up making something which came up in the process. Then I end up with something abstract. Absolutely. Uh, I, I can relate to that feeling. And that's kind of, to me, that's kind of, a, it can be a fun part of the process where you're aiming for for one specific image or, or result, and then you end up getting something that could be more interesting. That's the positive side of that coin. Also, it can be frustrating because you, you really wanna get what you had in your mind and it's not, you know, it's going off in a different direction. So that can be a good and bad thing, I suppose. Um, but I have opened my own mind to the abstract less than the realism recently. And I, I want that to become something that I, I uh, um, engage with a little bit more. like kind of letting creative things create itself a little bit with a little bit with more with some direction from me but I like it when new things come out of uh, unexpectedly uh, oh that's true that's a good point Tebow it does look like there's some some like post-processing done to the photo itself like desaturation maybe cranking up the blue values um, so yeah that's that's something to keep in mind as well um, but yeah good call <laughs> uh, I don't think I see any other oh Rita so what's with the ones and zeros comment um, comments bummer I did not think through the system for people showing up later um, basically to, to participate to have some fun Rita you know like as we I'm gonna ask I think there's only is there okay there's two more situations that we're gonna talk about um, and I'm gonna read the question and then once I count to 10 
you're going to answer this question. Can principal do a hologram by itself, right? Um, one single principal BSDF, it can have a bunch of nodes, uh, texture nodes coming into it, but only one principal BSDF. Can it be used to accomplish this effect? And then I'm gonna count to 10. You put your answer zero for no, it cannot, one for yes, it can. And uh, that's how you, you get points theoretically. Um, so yeah, we're gonna do that. And uh, I'm gonna count, now that I've explained it. So well, a hologram, right? This is, um, you know, Star Wars type effect. Um, so it's used, it's, it's, I would consider it realistic in that you see it in films fairly often, sci-fi sci films. Um, so it's kind of accepted as like a, probably it's gonna happen one day, it's gonna look like this. But um, so I count this as in the realm of at least believability. If you think that principle can achieve this effect by itself, um, press one, and if you think it cannot, press zero. And I'll count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. You guys are smart. I will give you that. This one is no, it cannot, for exactly the reason that Pavel said. Um, Actually, all the components that I put into this material uh, is not is not even present inside the the principle, and it's not a super complex material. But there is no emission value, and there's no alpha transparency built in. So that is really all that's happening with with some. There's some procedural textures plugged into an emission and an alpha transparency. That's it, and that is not present inside the principle. So had a couple a couple ones in there. Um, but no, the answer is no, it cannot. Oh no, that's the next one. Um, hologram, so yeah, it cannot. Let's open up that example. Hologram. And yeah, I mean, I'm just using emission and alpha transparency. So it's always astounded me that neither of those are included in the principled BSDF because it's very common, you know, um, to like, have a robot that uses, you know, metallic and painted materials. So that's great for principled, but there's also little lights being emitted and that's just not an, an option in principled. And I've never understood that. Same thing with alpha transparency. There's a lot of reasons why you would need alpha transparency and not refractive transparency. But currently we just have to mix this. If we want, if we want emission, we have to, um, you know, have this situation where we, we mix it like this um, you know, use a, a mask as a factor, that kind of thing. Uh, so it seems like low hanging fruit to be able to implement um, emission and alpha transparency inside principled BSDF. <laughs> That's awesome. Watching on TG Cookie, I get answers before the question is asked. That's pretty great. Oh, I guess it's because of the delay maybe, or are you saying that, that like the information's coming so, um, so quickly that you get answers before you have questions. Anyway, um, so yeah, uh, this one's pretty simple. Just it, the, the components are missing entirely from principal BSDF and uh, it's not applicable. So kind of a bummer. I mean, it's not the worst thing in the world to just, you know, add these other nodes, but still until, until those things are, are included, the principal cannot replace this type of shader. Yeah, so we talked about hologram. That, uh, and I guess I should also say that since there's absolutely nothing that Principal BSDF can do for us, if you want to see that hologram shader, I have uh, that a lesson on that in the Shader Forge course for anyone who's not seen it. Um, you can use it as is in 2.8. Like it's, it's going to be the same setup. There is a hologram chapter somewhere, hologram right here. So recommend if you want to see exactly how to create that shader, watch that. And on that note, um, I've part of where this came from, this idea of there being a misconception about the principal BSDF in the community, um, I've had people ask, when am I going to redo shader forge lessons using principal BSDF? And it got me thinking that, I mean, not, number one, you don't ever have to use principal. Like you get, all the nodes are still valid outside of principled. Um, so 
it could just be preference. I don't want to use principled, you know, or, or the person, an artist doesn't have to use principled, but in some cases principled cannot replace it. So th those questions on the Shader Forge course made me think that people in this community also thought it was a replacement, um, just kind of out of the box. So question is OpenGL a shader? Um, no, no, I don't think so. So OpenGL is a type of, if we go to Blender, OpenGL is what you see right here. So this is um, the viewport. It's how 3D objects and scenes are rendered in real time. It's kind of like a game engine. Okay, yeah, there's a link to Wikipedia OpenGL. Um, but no, it's not a shader. It's a type of uh, overall render engine. So thanks for the assist there, Silent Heart. And we've got another hologram. Let's go to the last example. Absorption. Okay, this is another, I guess, phenomenon where when you have colored transparent refractive materials, th uh, the thickness will determine the color of that, that material. So in the bottle example, you know, you have a, a, a cylindrical wall of glass, you know, that's creating the, the body of the bottle and where it's most directly facing you, the, the thickness is thin but then as it curves around, the thickness is kind of doubled on, or like multiplied on top of each other. So you can see on the sides, the color is much deeper, much more saturated. And on the thinner portions, it's much brighter and desaturated, right? So the color is, is directly um, uh, controlled by the thickness based on your perspective. Um, Derek, say, I appreciate it when you make small mistakes. Kent, you're so good at uh, what you do. Your instructional material is some of the best. Wow, thank you. Uh, when you uh, slip up, it makes me feel better about my personal struggle to learn some of this material, knowing it's best uh, in the business, have some lapses. Oh, well, I appreciate the, the positive sentiment for sure. Man, you're already guessing before I even um, before I even count. Come on, you don't like to hear me count? Derek, I appreciate that, certainly. Um, I've always been kind of on the fence about whether to include mistakes. I agree. Initially, I agree that like mistakes are good to see, but I also th can respect people losing interest when there are mistakes. So I try to include ones that, that don't take too long to fix or whatever, but I'm glad. Absolutely. The best of, of, I'm not the best of the best, but the best of the best, all of, all of us are making mistakes and learning new things. And like when you, if I ever recorded like my raw workflow, unrehearsed workflow, Gosh, I'll bet, this is an interesting thought, I'll bet that like a significant percentage, maybe 50% of the time creating that is like trying something and it not working and then trying something else until it works. Like no matter how experienced I get, it's always mistakes, uh, always, that's like a big part of the process. Problem solving is huge in computer graphics. Anyway, thank you for that, Derek. I, I do appreciate the sentiment. Um, all right, so we've got a little bit of of uh, variety in here. We have a few zeros. I have so uh, mostly ones. I like it. I like it. I didn't even have to count for this one. So, yes, absorption can be done with the principle BSDF, which surprised me when I when I set out with this example. I'm like, for sure, the principle is not going to respect the absorption. Um, so yes. In a sense, like when I said absorption, and this is maybe you can hold this against me. When I said absorption, I don't mean, I didn't mean volumetrics. That, that seemed a little too easy. Like if you look in the shader nodes, of course there's a print, like principled absorption or principled volumetrics. What is it? Um, if I, let's see, if I add shader, uh, principled volume, right? So there are, there's volume, there is volume absorption. I wasn't meaning that. I'm, I'm just talking principle BSDF, which would require absorption to be basically a procedural uh, texture node generation. And to my, I thought for sure when I plug that into the principle BSDF, it would not work. And to my surprise, it does. So I would have guessed zero. I would be with the zeros if I didn't test this out myself. But for those of you that don't know, the absorption node is, is a, a formula that um, you put into a bunch of different nodes that, that essentially calculates this, uh, this idea of, of thickness, right? So in this honey example, the thickest part of the honey is almost black. It's very dark, like molasses. But then once it thins out, you see this bright amber gold 
uh, kind of color. And so that's, you know, absorption in a nutshell. And so in cycles, if I were to use principled by itself, let me add another one, shader principle BSDF. If I plug that into our Suzanne monkey head, let's go, let's copy this blue color. Wait a minute. I think I can actually, I don't need this other node. Sorry. Mistakes, right? Um, if I just eliminate this, so a single color into a into the, the uh, transmission of the principle, everything is exactly the same color. It does not care about thickness. But when we use this absorption um, factor, essentially, it it does respect the thickness. And all of a sudden, the ears are are barely blue, and the the center is very blue, um, barely blue, very blue. So that is what is happening in absorption. And this node is available if you'd like it. Um, well, number one, I teach it from scratch in the, what is it, stylistic, in the Pancake Hobo course, this one right here, texturing and shading a stylistic character. Uh, I go over the formula from scratch if you want to see that, that nerdy math happen. It's in the chapter, where is it, chapter three, shading, the, the, uh, da, 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 da maple syrup material this lesson right here i go over yeah there's the formula right there so that's the raw um the raw node setup for uh to get to get um absorption working and if you want to download the uh i think i'm going too fast for my brain so watch that from scratch if you want if you just want to download the absorption node that that we released go to the resources tab blender resources and utility node groups. In there, you'll find our CGC absorption node, and that's what I'm using in the material currently. And that essentially is, it boils it down to one single factor with a scale value. And um, from there, you can plug that, like I did here, into a color ramp that allows you to adjust, you know, dynamically how the thickness, how much the thickness uh, uh, affects the shader. So anyway, when I when you have all of that, uh, I was really really surprised that you could plug it straight into the base color and have it work. So good for um, principle; it totally does work. Um, on that note, though, speaking of, uh, I, I also it works great with glass, right? So transmission, uh, pure glass, that kind of thing, it works great. But I also use um, the absorption node to include other materials like the translucent uh, BSDF. If we go back to where was Shader Forge? Right here. Okay, yeah, so these, these gems right here. These gems, I use a, the translucent BSDF because it renders faster than subsurface scattering and uh, just created a nicer effect. And so in those situations, you know, you can't, you can't really do that. You can't do that within the principal BSDF. Um, so these, the principal VSDF essentially houses the most common components, but if we add shader, uh, if we add more shader types, you know, you've got your tune BSDF, translucent, which cannot be recreated inside of principled. Um, you've got your velvet, for example, so um, pulled out, like that kind of thing. I guess when I hear, when I hear um, Andrew and, and, and other people say like, the shader to end all shaders, it's a little hyperbolic, I understand, but like, it's just not, you know, there's other things that principled cannot do, components missing, and often I will use the color, uh, this this um, absorption to mix in like a translucent material with a glass material. You get a lot of interesting type of effects that way. Um, and so, yeah, that was, uh, let's see, anything else is, anything being asked? Not sure if it will correctly transmit light though. Yeah, okay, right, so Pavel, uh, it looks more like a hack. Yes, the ab the absorption node is, I think, without a doubt, a hack. It's based on the formula, like the Wikipedia formula, scientific formula, but it it is definitely a hack. Um, and I guess the principle, I honestly have never used this either, principled volume. Yeah, so I'm out of my, I'm, I'm a little out of touch with the volume stuff, but, um, Volume is going to be more scientifically reliable, like it's not a hack. These, these principle, the volume, the absorption, shader, volume absorption, that kind of thing, they're not hacks, 
but they also, I'm pretty sure, take a lot longer to render than using the hack. Um, but I need to test that. So to your point, yes, it is a hack, and that goes with that goes well with my perspective. Like I don't, I don't consider myself like a slave to realism and and science in that way. Um, but I know absorption has to exist because this, like, I don't think this is ever a thing, right? Like pure blue, not respecting thickness at all. Like, I don't think this counts as physically accurate. Um, I just, I don't think that's how glass works. So I would, I would rather have absorption in there knowing that it is something that happens in real life, but still maintain the artistic, um, ability to tweak it as I see fit. Um, so yeah, it fits within my believable aesthetic priority, I guess, rather than like strictly realism. Um, but it, to your point, it's totally a hack. Um, apparently time to get an advanced math degree. I understand that feeling sort of, uh, well, that's your name sort of, um, but I understand that, that, that feeling, but thankfully uh, everyone else has done math for us and you can, you can get along just fine by copying other people by going to Wikipedia, finding the, the formulas yourself. Um, with shading, like lighting and stuff has been di uh, diagnosed and, and figured out scientifically, you know, years, decades ago. And we're just starting, you know, to implement them into computer graphics. So anyway, all that to say, you don't actually need a, a, an advanced math degree unless you want to create all of this stuff uh, in a vacuum. Um, cool. So that, I believe... Oh, figure, okay, yeah, Jake, figure out the principal volume shader and add a new entry into the forge. Challenge accepted. I do need to do that. Absolutely. Um, so we got absorption. All right, that's kind of, that was what I had for you today. Uh, Principled is a fantastic addition to the BSDF family, without a doubt. Um, I would say it's not a universal replacement, and uh, hopefully that can clear up any misconception out there of people thinking that it is. And if you... If, if anyone's avoiding the Shader Forge lesson or Shader Forge course or any of our shading material that doesn't use principled BSDF, it's okay. You're going to be fine if you if you learn it without principled. Going forward, though, um, I do anticipate using principled where it's relevant, I guess, to say that. Anything else? Oh, yeah, the most important thing. Who got all five correct? I know there's already, you know, uh, some discrepancy because it wasn't explained quite properly or there was... Um, uh, slow down in the chat or something, but if you got all five correct, please say I, uh, winner. Type winner in the chat if you did, um, and I will. That'll help me out to to be able to go in there and add those 50 XP points. And if you got four, say uh, almost winner. <laughs> say that, and I'll I'll give you 40 points because I don't want uh, um, anyone to to be to get uh, to get gypped or anything. So uh, anyway, I had a lot of fun. This was a fun topic to kind of dig into, and it's been something I've wanted to talk about for a while. Um, feeling like that misconception is 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 fairly common. Not this guy. I got three. I got four out of five. There we go. Um, I hope you guys had fun. But uh, with that said, that's all I've got for you this week. Um, next week we're we're doing a, a simple project. If you want to check that out. Um, let me see, what is it? Creating icicles with Blender. So this is, uh, it's, it, I'm just trying to design a, like a two hour project from, from start to finish, uh, create a scene similar to this um, and just go through that whole process step by step. Not so much a presentation beforehand, but just a workflow for two hours. And uh, um, so yeah, so, sign up for that, RSVP to that if you'd like. We already have 91, which is pretty good. Um, seems like that you, some people are interested in that. Um, I'm also trying to fill out the rest of the last, for, for a stream schedule, I'm trying to fill out what the, from the end of January through February, there's like four weeks where I don't have any streams. So I'm, I'm thinking about doing projects like this. And I'm curious if that kind of interests you guys, um, these two hour workflow projects. Um, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to rehearse as much as I can, but it's also going to be fairly raw, like uh, seeing the workflow real time, including mistakes and, and stuff like that. So if you're interested in that kind of thing, rather than a presentation topical kind of a, a kind of stream, then maybe I'll try and fill out the next four weeks with kind of project-based things. Um, so that's kind of what I'm thinking. But uh, yeah, I'm also thinking of, of doing like a start, look for it, maybe a forum thread about 
live stream topics, like live stream genres, and, and maybe add, ask for some votes to be cast on what you guys want to see. Um, Jeffrey, if we are plan if we plan on using a scene under 2.8 and EV later, isn't it better to use principal BSDF? I mean, isn't it more compatible than using the other BSDF nodes? That's a great question. I'm not sure if it's more compatible. That would kind of stink for if that's true, because I I'm kind of I I use non B uh, principled fairly often. I don't know. I'll have to look into that. Maybe. Maybe EV isn't very um, supportive of, of non-principled BSDF. We know that principled is very compatible, so it's a safe bet that, that you'll want to get in there. But also, um, but even with EV, you know, I'm not always doing the crazy procedural things with cycles that I'll do with EV. Uh, this is a whole other topic, but um, I'm, I'm actually thinking about doing another stream about when EV is good to use and when it's not good to use. Uh, so that might fit into that that kind of uh, thing. Okay, sounds interesting, but the lectures are also cool. Some doodles are modeling warm up. Okay, cool. All right, good. I'll, um, I'll keep that in mind. I'll pr maybe not four straight weeks of project stuff, but but like maybe three projects and then another lecture based type thing. Maybe the, the EV, when it's good and when it's not kind of situation, but good to know. I'll, um, I might also ask for a for some votes to be cast in a in a Google form. Anyway, I'm kind of talking, talking, uh, talking out of nowhere right now. So I'm going to let you guys go. Thanks for coming along with this, uh, principal BSDF. Thanks for playing the game. I'm going to give you those points. I've got it in the chat now so I can scroll through there and, and add those points for you today. And I will see you next week. So thank you. Have a good one.